Hello, my dear friends. Today it's evening time, and that's a time to tell you the stories about the subject of my study, about parasitic wasps. Well, who are parasitic wasps? I will take this big book from International Congress in Hungary, Parasitic Wasps, Evolution, Systematics, Biodiversity and Biological Control, edited by George Merica and Chaba Turzi, and published in 2001 in Hungary. This book about different groups of parasitic wasps. And who are parasitic wasps? As I told you in a previous video that entomologists may study class insecta, insects, but insects, all of them, they contain different orders. They contain hymenopterans or hymenoptera, then lepidoptera, coleoptera, megaloptera, tisanoptera, thrips, butterflies, beetles, silverfish, many different insects. And each entomologist who is taxonomist should select a particular group for study. And my group is Hymenoptera. That's a famous book by Gold and Barry Bolton, Hymenoptera. So this book contains absolutely enormous information about Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera, this is a special order which contains entomophagos and phytophagos insects. And these are wasps, bees, honeybees, solitary and social bees, then sawflies, ants, bumblebees, then phytophagos, hemipterans, and parasitic wasps. Which parasitic wasps from different super orders. I will tell you later about them. Oh, that's another book, Hymenopter of the World, edited by Henry Gaudet and John Huber, Canada. Absolutely amazing book about Hymenopterans. Identificational keys and pictures and for identification of different groups of Hymenoptera. So you see here 16 chapters and 16 super families of Hymenoptera. Well, and what's about Hymenoptera? I study separate group of Hymenopterans, parasitic was a super family, Calcididae, and smaller group, smaller group, Echparasitoids of, super fam of family Trichogrammatidae. And who are Calcid wasps? I will show you some of them. It's difficult to show them on screen, but nevertheless, entomologists collect, collects insects and put them on pins or on this cardboard. So, see some of them, many of them here. Or sometimes I put them in a small plastic tube. Here maybe a hundred of them. These are tiny calcid wasps, including family Trichogrammatidae. And how do you think entomologists should study insects? Especially these insects. These insects, this parasitic wasp, I must tell you, they are very small, approximately one millimeter or half of millimeter. Of course, if I publish this book, I put here many photographs of calcid wasps. You see, they are quite big. But originally, all these tiny wasps are very small, less than one millimeter. Or if I take, for example, another public, another, my paper about Trichogramma, here, you see, this is quite a big insect, but originally, this insect is just of half of millimeter. Trichogramma is very tiny. Trichogramma is a parasitoid of different Lepidopterans, different butterflies and moths, the egg of butterfly and very tiny trichogramma. 
And who are calcidivores? Many of calcidivores buy entomophagous insects, and some of them buy phytophagous insects. Like here, you see photographs of different parasitoids. Not all of them parasitoids, some of them phytophagous, like this one, Torimida family. But these groups, they're entomophagous. They are eating other insects. Their larvae are eating other insects. Because this is a life cycle of parasitoid. Parasitoid female is ovipositing egg in egg, larva, or pupa, or even adult of insect, or sometimes even to a curry, to mite, or tick, like this in Satidae. And larva of parasitoid developing inside the host, then pupates, and adult emerge from that just skin of eaten host. And entomologist who is studying entomophagous sequences must take photographs of different aspects of their groups. For example, biology. Here I took photographs of these parasitoids, how they oviposited eggs in eggs of beetles, actually underwater. This is a special underwater groups of parasitic wasps. And then entomologist and taxonomist must study it, must study each insect or species under the microscope. This stereo microscope or another microscope like behind of me. And I take photographs like here. Okay to take photographs. It's slightly difficult process. I need to ma manage some microscopic slides. I do these tiny microscopic slides for Trico Rama and other calciduos. It takes certain time. It's not easy because you have to dissect insect. You have to separate, for example, ovipositor, legs, antennae, wings, or just just dissect the body. But insect is quite small, just a millimeter or half of a millimeter, don't forget about it. And after that, I can see it under the microscope to take photographs and to make identification. Why entomologists do identification? To identify precisely the name of individual of this species. Why? Because it's not easy, but it's possible to find new species of calcium water. And for that, after that, we need to describe the species and to publish it in entomological journals. And actually, these parasitic wasps, being entomophagos, eating, they are eating different pests. Pests of agriculture, pests of forestry, of urban areas, and this is quite useful. For example, these insects, they are quite tiny but they are developing on different pests, on different agricultural and forestry pests. So, the usage of these beneficial insects for human being purposes is called biological control. We can use some beneficial organism against another, as we call pests. So, because these entomophagous insects will eat in other insects, and it's quite useful. You don't need to use chemicals. Insects will eat insects. It's quite easy, quite useful. No chemicals, clean, no pollution, and good health. For example, we published a book of entomophagous insects of pests of apple trees. Yeah, we have also the atlas of these species and identificational keys of these species. So that's quite useful to identify all these beneficial insects because when farmer is going to orchard, 
Pollen can easy to find pests, which is eating, for example, leaves, branches, or just bark of trees. But sometimes farmer cannot see small insects, small parasitoids. These parasitoids they can destroy pests inside your garden, inside your field, and it's quite useful. Don't use chemicals. You can just regulate your garden, or you can regulate it by usage or just by rearing and by conservation of your natural enemies. And these insects, Hymenopterans, parasitic wasps, they are natural enemies of different agricultural and forestry pests. For example, I got here a bunch of journals, it's called the IPM Practitioner, Integrated Pest Management Practitioner Monitoring the Field of Pest Management. It's published in California and United States. So, and here you can find even, okay, here you can find a special catalog of companies that are rearing different beneficial insects and sell them for your orchard. So you can distribute them in your orchard and all these beneficial insects will eat your pests and you don't need to use pesticides. For example, we also study these beneficial insects on chestnut trees and on oak in the environs of the city Kiev in Ukraine. We found a bunch of different species of parasitic wasps, calcid wasp and ichneumonid wasps. They are developing on oak, leaf mining wasps, and also on chestnut leaf mining wasps. For example, here on this oak we found 16 species of calcid wasps and 16 species of ichneumonoid wasps developing on oak leaf mining moth. And for example, I also need to mention this raid book. This is a book of Debach, the book of biological control of insect pests and weeds. Well, that's a great book because this book explains how to use beneficial insects, how to use natural enemies against different pests. Despite this book published in 1968, the principles of biological control were still ready and very useful even now. And different laboratories use beneficial insects for rearing and for distribution against different pests. Another book of Clausen and Tamophagus insects. If you want to be familiar about life cycles of entomophagous insects, there's a book to read. Because in this book you can find different groups of entomophagous insects among hymenoptera, among diptera, among coleoptera, and with description of their life cycles. Very useful book with description of biology, habits, with description of Immature stages, larvae, pupae of all these different groups of insects. Quite useful because how you can recognize that there are some entomophagous insects in your garden. You have to collect your pest, put it in your glass jar, and then, for example, you need to find what is inside this parasite, inside this pest. Either this pest parasitized or not. For that, you need to dissect it. Look under the microscope and if you can find larva of unusual creature, usually that's a larva of parasitoid, because parasitoid can develop inside a pest. And this actually will be endo 
parasitoid developing inside, or if you collect, for example, caterpillar, and you will find small white worms on the caterpillar, this will be just ectoparasitoid developing on the body of caterpillar, and they are eating from outside. This is pro usually cuts the wasps. Or if you find another caterpillar with, which is dying, and has a white cocoons around, this will be cocoons of ichnivanoid wasps or braconid wasps. Collect them, put them in your some jars, and bring it to the laboratory of your college, university, or another scientific identification organization for identification. Some specialists could identify it. An entomologist, we need to collect these insects for study. I showed you that we can use America traps, collect them, and then separate using this small net. Like here I collected during the summer a big group of samples. These samples were collected by America traps. These insects, actually, the inside, ethanol. Inside, 90. 6% ethanol, that's stored, later we must sort it, select necessary interesting group for study, okay, it will be probably not so easy, nevertheless, it's quite productive to collect insects by American traps for study, then we separate them, put them in separate plastic or glass jars, and I'm doing the last slides for study and for identification under microscope. That's a brief story about parasitic wasps, about methods of investigation, about collection, about different books, and I hope that it will be some continuation of this story, and I hope that it was interesting for you. And if you have questions, Look down, I have email, send me email and keep in touch. Look forward to hearing from you. Good luck. See you soon.